Hello students, welcome to the UV Bristol Harvard referencing video. Um, today we are going to look at this reference system that is used by most um, programs at Villa College. I am Yasser and I work at uh, Villa College in the learning support um, section. Okay. By the end of this lesson or this session, you will understand why we reference and how to avoid plagiarism understand what the UA Bristol Howard Referencing System is and know of the tools available to help you to reference properly. First of all, why should we reference at all? As you know, academic knowledge is built by working and working from other people's knowledge. It's very rare that um, one of us is a genius who is able to totally start off a new field of knowledge. So we have to look at what other people have said about a particular topic or topic area and then uh, look at other people who said different things about it as well and then think about what that means and what that knowledge entirely means. So we are using other people's knowledge in order to develop our own knowledge. Therefore, we need to acknowledge when we use other people's ideas or whenever we use other people's ideas. The other thing is that when we submit an essay or a PowerPoint a presentation and so on, we need the lecturer or whoever is looking at it to be able to follow the citations that you have made. The citations are the information that you give in the, in the body of your work. So when you give the proper citations and also the proper referencing at the end of the work, then the lecturer or other person is able to follow your citation and look at it if they want to and clarify any any doubts they have or clarify and find out more about that topic from that other uh, literature. So when we reference and when we give citations we need to acknowledge other people's ideas, words, images, illustrations, any sort of information that is taken from other people should be acknowledged. Whether it is adapted or not or whether it's in the original form we have to give a citation not doing this is academic dishonesty and it can be considered to be plagiarism and it's an academic offense or assessment offense at uv as well as at villa college so a very simple way of looking at um, plagiarism plagiarism is basically passing off someone else's work, whether unintentionally or unintentionally, as their own. The important thing here is that even if it's unintentional, the reader, the lecturer, doesn't know whether it is intentional or not. So whenever you feel that you're using other people's uh, uh, knowledge, other people's phrases, other people's um, images and so on, you need to give a citation to it so that the lecturer or uh, other person who's looking at your work can follow that and see that it is taken from this particular source and that you have used it either uh, in an adapted form or whether you have uh, taken it as original and shown that it is an original uh, quotation or image and so on. Okay. So, how can we avoid plagiarism? Let me just uh, play a video and we'll look at it and work from there. Plagiarism is something we hear about often, but do we really know what it means? You might hear the word used by your professor as part of a warning and something you should avoid. But how do you do this? Let's take a look. First, what is plagiarism? Plagiarism occurs when a writer uses someone else's language, ideas, or other original material without acknowledging its source. Whether you intend to or not, you are stealing someone else's ideas. Here's an example. You're writing a Okay, I hope you were able to view the video or listen to the audio just now and also do the uh, referencing, uh, the plagiarism quiz actually. We'll do some other quizzes later on. 
uh, and I hope you found that most of the answers were correct for you. Um, so let's, uh, let's now look at uh, what referencing helps you to do. One of the most important things when you do referencing properly is that it helps you to keep accurate records of your sources. So when you know the referencing system properly, you know the kinds of information you need in order to give the citation, but also to give the proper reference in the reference list. So for example, to give a reference for um, an article, you need the author's last name, surname or surname, uh, other names, the initials, the year of publication, the title of the article, the title of the journal it appeared in, the volume number, the issue number, and uh, also you'll need to give the date on which you looked at that particular uh, article. Now very often we look at articles online, so um, we will be looking at PDFs, whether we look at it from uh, after looking it up in, a, in an online library or whether it's some article that a friend has uh, given to you or a lecturer has provided for you. So you need to keep those, keep those sorts of records in order to give a proper reference list but also to give a citation. So good referencing allows you to keep hold of all of the materials that need uh, that are needed for referencing properly and also all the materials that need to be referenced for your particular uh, assignment or assessment. You also uh, need referencing to show the lecturer that you have made a good effort to read the materials he or she has recommended that you read uh, for a particular assignment but also for the topic area and also to show that you have made more of an effort than the bare minimum so that uh, the lecturer knows okay you made the effort you've tried to read more widely around this, this particular topic area and that you uh, you've made a good effort at it in order to ref refer or do reference properly uh, and to give a citation properly you will be uh, using paraphrase or summary or quotations. Now out of these um, quotations should be used very wisely and sparingly because when you use a quote or a quotation you're basically giving the exact phrase or the exact sentence that the author has used uh, and when you do that what you are saying is okay I've seen this information in the article I've read, um, you know, have a look at it uh, to the lecturer. Uh, and when you do that, you're not really saying what you have learned from that quotation or from that particular piece of information. So more important to use is either paraphrase or summary. Now paraphrase, as the um, word says, is uh, saying the phrase in a different way. Yeah. Um, so, when you paraphrase, you're basically trying to say exactly what has been said in the original material, in the original article or source, but as far as possible, you're, sh uh, you're following almost exactly the same um, words or the same phrases, but in your own words, so you basically just change it slightly. Now, for one thing, that is uh, very often very difficult to do. And the other thing is you're still not really showing that you have really understood that information. To show that you've really understood that information, what you do is you summarize. Summary is very interesting because with a summary you're showing very immediately to the lecturer that you've understood what you have read and you're just using your own words in order to uh, show your understanding. Um, any of these types, uh, except for the quotations, right? Paraphrase or summary can also be used to uh, bring together different sources into the same um, sentence. For instance, so for example, instead of saying uh, "white 2015 said this" and uh, "black 2017 said that," you could say "black 2015 and um, white 2017." Uh, agree on this and this and such information. So uh, 
using summary or using paraphrase you can bring together different people's opinions in the same sentence or you can compare the different information that the these different uh, sources have given so for example you might even say whereas uh, why 2015 um, stated such and such a thing black 2017 has disagreed with this and said such and such a thing. So using paraphrase and summary helps you to make your argument more complex and more interesting. Okay, let's now look at the UA Bristol Harvard referencing system. This is different from the Harvard referencing system you may have heard of and it is definitely different from the APA style of referencing which some of you may already be familiar with. Um, so your Bristol Howard system is a little bit different from the Howard system and you need to re know and keep in mind that the UE Bristol, the UE website ue.ac.uk has the, the uh, reference guide, the crucial reference guide for you to use whenever you are doing your assignment and you should refer to it continuously as you do your assignment so that you become familiar with it and that you so that you can make sure that your referencing is correct uh, if you don't use the correct um, uh, referencing exactly you may lose marks and you may lose quite a lot of marks depending on uh, whichever assignment you're doing or your dissertation okay um, so the basic thing about using a referencing system is that you give a citation in the body of your work and then you give a proper reference, a full reference to that particular item in the reference list. Uh, with you and Mr. Howard referencing, um, you, are, you have to use a reference list rather than a bibliography. And the reference list should have all of the sources that you have cited in your work, in your, in your essay or in your PowerPoint. And also your work, your essay or your PowerPoint and so on should have all of the all of the items that are in the reference list so if you have 10 different so sources cited in your work you should have 10 items in the reference list those 10 items nothing more nothing less uh, the other thing is that it's worth mentioning that the reference list should be uh, complete and in alphabetical order and you should try to make it uh, as neat as possible so that um, the person reading your work is able to follow it easily and carefully. So what does it look like? Basically it looks like this. If you're using a source with two authors, uh, you have to use this format, Pike and Harrison 2011 and uh, it can be uh, an author prominent citation as in the first example that you can see here. So Pike and Harrison, though the, the author's name or names goes into the sentence, that is called an author prominent citation. And in the second example, that is an information, uh, information uh, prominent citation where you're basically looking at the information and the author's name or names are given in brackets because uh, in the first example, maybe you want to uh, make sure that the, exam, uh, the the lecturer knows that you have read this particular article which he or she may have recommended quite a bit or mentioned quite a bit. In the second example, maybe uh, the, the lecturer hasn't mentioned these authors very much, but you have read it and therefore you're using it in your uh, essay because it's relevant. and. Uh, you feel that the information is more important than the authors uh, and therefore you may use this sort of citation where um, the author's name or names are given in brackets so that they are not so prominent. Something that I've highlighted here is investigated. Investigated is uh, an academic reporting verb and academic reporting verbs can be used very effectively to make sure uh, that your writing is more vivid and more interesting. So for example, instead of just saying Pike and Harrison stated or Pike and Harrison uh, according to Pike and Harrison, you can use uh, different academic reporting verbs to make your writing more 
uh, interesting and more uh, striking. Another example, whenever you use uh, quotations, you have to be very careful that within the quotations are only the words that are originally from the, from the source. So anything within the quotation should be from the source without any changes. And whenever you use a quotation, you also have to make sure that you use uh, three bits of information. In the previous slide, uh, there were two bits of information uh, in the citation, which is the author name or author's names and the year of publication. When you use a quotation, you have to use three bits of information, which is the author's name or names and the year of publication and also the page number where you got the quotation. So this has an implication for when you make notes and I recommend that you make notes whenever you're doing an essay or any um, piece of assessment or tutorial work so that uh, within the notes you note down uh, first of all just looking at notes uh, making notes first of all you should have at the top of a piece of paper the bibliographic information that you will need for the reference list so the author's name the initials uh, the year of publication the title of the article or the title of the book uh, the title of the journal, the title of the, sorry, the volume number, the issue number, the date on which you looked at it or you got it immediate um, uh, first time. Uh, so that is called the access date. Uh, all of that information has to be in the notes. But then uh, in your note making, you would be looking at the question, you would be looking at the plan that you have developed for this particular piece of writing and see which piece of information from each article is useful for that particular um, question, for that particular assessment. And you would be taking notes. I recommend that you should take notes, not in quotations, because that, that kind of um, leads you to using a lot of quotations in your work, which is not very valuable because uh, just a quotation doesn't add value to what you uh, are showing the lecture about what you know. So instead of that, when you take notes, you should use uh, your own interpretation of the information that is given by the authors. But it's also important to note down the page number, even if it is not a quotation. But whenever you do note down a quotation, you should make sure that you have the exact phrasing within quotation marks and that you note down uh, the page number for sure okay so uh, going back a little bit uh, if you're uh, giving a citation uh, if it is a quotation you need three bits of information if you're using paraphrase or summary you need two bits of information in the citation uh, again um, here also um, I've, I've used a, um, an academic reporting verb reported as reported by Pike and Hansen. So that uh, tells the, the lecturer that you have um, you have seen this article, you have understood it and you know that it's a report rather than uh, <clears throat> uh, an investigation or something else. Also uh, note that when you give the quotation, when you give those three bits of information, the page number is given with a simple P dot and 58 without um, the, the page number without spaces in between. But then <clears throat> you have to use a space after each of the commas that are given uh, when you give the citation. Again, uh, <clears throat> here also uh, uh, we are looking at uh, the same quotation, uh, but here it's an author prominent citation. So the author's name or names are given within the sentence as part of the sentence. So then you give, uh, then you give the, the year of publication and the page number within brackets. Yeah. So there is an author prominent quotation. Looking at um, citations that have um, more authors, up to three authors have to be mentioned. All of the authors have to be mentioned if it is um, a citation with up to three authors. So Christie, Barron and Dunnan Green 
are all authors, three authors, all of them I have to be mentioned. But if you look lower down this slide, you'll see that uh, Korn et al, 2013, uh, is just one name. But et al actually defines that there are other authors. So it is uh, basically Quan and others, right? Uh, this is done when you have four or more authors in the citation, in that, uh, or uh, four or more people who are attributed to a particular source, a document, an article, and so on. So in the citation, you use the first name given in the list of authors, but in the reference list, you have to give uh, the last name and the initials for each of the authors that are actually relevant to this particular document. Okay. Um, so let's move on a little bit more. Okay, so just to repeat what we said just now, uh, if you have up to three authors for a citation, you should list all three authors in the citation and then you give the year of publication if it is a paraphrase or summary uh, and then if there are four or more authors you have to give three bits of information which is uh, yeah for a quotation uh, when, when you give a direct quotation you have three bits of information the the author's name the year of publication the page number and then if there are four or more authors you have to say it all in italics and as two separate words followed by a full stop, right? So Quan et al. full stop and then the year of publication and then uh, the rest of the citation uh, should be given. Okay, now let's look at the reference list. If you look at this reference list, you can see that there are three entries. They are in alphabetical order and two of these are journals and one of them is a book right which one is the book okay it's the last one uh, as a book uh, the the entry has the author's name so um, initial year of publication the the title of the book the place of publication and the publisher um, so if you look at uh, a little bit of detail here the title of the book uh, or the title of anything that you give as a reference has to be in italics and in initial caps. As you can see with Highland K 2006, English for Academic Purposes and Advanced Resource, uh, the title itself is given in what is called initial caps, basically meaning that all of the words in the title, except for grammatical words of three letters or less, like four, should not should be capitalized uh, but if you see after the call and after purposes and advanced resource and is capitalized and the reason there is it's considered after the the main title english for academic purposes and uh, sorry an advanced resource is also seen as almost a sentence so um, at the beginning of a sentence you basically need to have a capital so and is also capitalized for that reason and you can see that it's italicized and it uh, the whole title is initial capitalized except for the word for okay now if you look at the next two uh, the first two entries they are both from journals the first one is from the research in international education journal so the title of the journal is in italics and in initial caps just like with the book so r is capital i is capital e is capital in is not capitalized because it's a, a grammatical word of less than three letters. Okay, so it's italicized, initial capitalized. The second uh, journal also is initial capitalized and also in italics. Studies in higher education, uh, in is again not capitalized. Now you see that for both of those entries, there is an online uh, notification in what is called square brackets and uh, here also square brackets online and also um, because um, the writer here has seen it online has seen both of these online um, the online um, notification is there plus you have to say accessed you have to say the access date in square brackets again so you say accessed 
09 June 2014, for example, or 01 June 2014. Even if it is uh, the first nine days of a month, you have to use zero in front to make it uh, a double um, digit number. 09, 08, 07, like that. And then uh, the complete uh, month in June, not JUN, nor not DEC for December, but the full version. And then the year uh, that you actually saw this pu uh, publication or article. Uh, you'll notice that there are lots of uh, um, full stops and commas and so on. And they all have to be in the right place and used at the right moment. So uh, looking first at the, uh, the names. So you give the last name of each author and then the initials right uh, and when you give the initials also uh, after the comma you give a space and then each initial followed by a dot and then a space before the year of publication even when you need to give uh, many authors like here um, you need to do the same thing uh, last name initial dot and then a comma to separate this name from the next name so then you have Baron comma p dot and a comma again to separate this person from the next one. Then uh, the next thing, the next thing is um, the title of an article. And a lot of the time, you will be looking at articles in journals. The title of an article should be given in sentence cap. Okay. Let's look at two more articles uh, in a reference list. Again, you can see the first one is a three-author uh, three article, uh, Pakiti, Woodrow, and Hirsch. All of them uh, need to be given, uh, so the last name, initial, dot, and um, a comma to separate each uh, author from the next one. And you'll see that there is an and used before the last name that is given. There's no comma before the and, uh, and then once you finish with the author's names, you give uh, the year of publication in, um, in normal brackets and then give a space and then you give the title of the article. Even if it is very long, you have to give the whole uh, title of the article. Here it says it's not only English, um, uh, colon, effects of other individual factors in English language learning and academic learning of ESL international students in Australia. Quite a long name, but all of it has to be given. And as you notice, it's in um, it's in basic letters, not bold, not italicized or anything, but it is in a sentence case. So only I and its is capitalized, uh, except for um, proper nouns like English there and ESL, which is an acronym for English as English for speakers of other languages but it's used in capital uh, letters. So those two words, English and ESL, are capitalized. And then, of course, Australia. Uh, everything else is in simple letters. And then uh, full stop. And then you give the, the name of the journal, Research in International Education, um, cap uh, initial capitalized and also in italics. And then before the full stop, after the journal title, you have to give the online notification. So in square brackets, you have online, in square brackets, and then a full stop. And then the volume number and the issue number. Now, sometimes um, some of the articles you look at may not have a volume number for the journal or an issue number. In that case, you miss out those missing data. So for example, if the issue number was not given here, then it would be just 12, comma, pp, and so on. Now, so you have here 12 is the volume number, 3 is the issue number, a space between those uh, different items, a comma, and then PP. PP means uh, the page range. So from 239 to 258 uh, pages in the art, in the journal. <clears throat> and then a full stop, and then access date should be given again in square brackets, after which there's a full stop. Now, in most entries um, in UV Bristol Howard referencing, there has to be a full stop right at the end. 
Okay. Now, uh, let's take a moment. Uh, you can pause the video uh, and use the QR code here, or you can type out the, the URL that's given here, or you can uh, look at the bottom of uh, this video to look at the description and find the reference quiz. Uh, the reference quiz will check whether you know enough about the referencing that we have just discussed. Uh, also think about the video that you saw or heard uh, so that you get the answers. Once you finish this, you'll get, um, you'll get uh, marked online uh, automatically and then you'll know uh, what sort of mistake you may have made. Uh, hopefully nobody makes any mistakes there. And then um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, um, here we are looking at the Microsoft Word plugin. Um, if you click the code here or go to the URL, and again, um, the URL will be given below the video in the description. You can just click through there and download the, the files. Uh, the text file in the folder that you see from this uh, link will tell you how to install the plugin and also um, uh, there'll be um, videos you can see links to videos where you can learn how to use install the plugin further and also to how to use the plugin these are some of the reference and tools that are available uh, the first tool although it's not really a tool is the ue bristol harvard web page this is a very crucial web page because uh, lecturers will be looking at the page as they're doing any marking for your assignments and therefore you as students need to be very familiar with this web page uh, so that you can make sure that you're on the right track. Uh, the page is very detailed uh, and you can see different sections, different kinds of um, sources that you can use in your reference list. So make sure that um, you get it right. Uh, if you have any issues, you can ask me um, or ask the learning support team through Viber or you can email to Eng English, sorry, uh, you can email to English at uh, villacollege.edu.mv or uh, learning support at um, villacollege.edu.mv. Okay. Uh, then you have the online reference builder, which is a, f uh, a feature of the web page, uh, UE web, web page. And you can use that to develop your uh, reference list items for journal articles or for book articles or books, right? Um, and this, these are f this um, this tool is fairly useful, but you have to copy different items uh, separately, or you can copy it into um, um, some uh, reference managers. Okay, now let's look at some of the resources that are available for your studies through learning support at Villa College. First, we have the Viber community. I hope many of you are already in the community. Uh, right now, we have more than uh, 1,500 members in the group. Um, so these are present students, uh, current students, and also uh, maybe students from the past. Uh, this group is useful because um, we are able to give you a lot of information on uh, academic writing, grammar, use of English, uh, and other interesting bits of information that you may uh, find enhances your studies at Villa College. You can use the QR code given here to join, or you can use the link that is shown as well. All of these, um, all of these links will be given in the description below the video, so you can have a look at it and click through from there as well. Um, these are some of the uh, posts that have been made recently, and um, as you can see, a lot of the links that are used are uh, trackable through uh, Bitly or other uh, other sources, so that. Uh, we can see how much engagement there is, how much use students find from the resources. Um, lots of clicks on some of the, the articles or the posts, uh, and some students actually share them as well, which is good. Um, I try to make sure that all of the videos that are made, or all of the classes, academic writing classes and so on, 
that are done are posted here. Then we have etudes. Um, these days etudes are online. Uh, initially etudes were designed uh, for face-to-face -face, uh, meetings with individual students or um, in pairs of students or small groups of students to talk about uh, their concerns with academic writing or referencing, language improvement in general, how to revise and so on. But now etudes can, uh, are done online and you can book an etude at any time. Uh, basically just make an appointment through this link shown here or uh, using the QR code that is shown here. Um, you may also uh, use the Viber group to contact um, me um, to make an appointment if the times that are given for the appointments are difficult. Okay. Then uh, we have academic writing workshops. These workshops will be ongoing throughout the semester um, at least once a week and those who sign up will be notified of the of the dates and the times so that you can participate. Uh, the videos will be posted and um, on, on the Viber group so that you can follow them even afterwards. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get some feedback from what you have learned from this whole uh, series of videos uh, or if you saw this as one video you can give us some feedback. So please click the QR code um, or go to the link. The link will also be given in the description below, um, below the video. If you want to download this presentation itself, you can click the QR code here or use the link that is given here. Um, and again, the, the link will be given in the description below the video.